So first of all, can you tell me what an immunodeficiency is? So to understand immunodeficiency, we first need to understand how the immune system works. So the immune system is actually a network of the immune cells and the proteins, which work together to protect us from foreign invaders such as bacteria, viruses and parasites. The immune cells are of different types. For example, we have lymphocytes, macrophages, monocytes, neutrophils, as well as plenty of immune proteins, for example, complement or proteins called antibodies or also known as immunoglobulins. These players of the immune system work together to protect us from the infections. And if any part of the immune system goes wrong or is missing, this can lead to immunodeficiency and therefore to the immunodeficiency disease. Could you give us an idea of some of the causes of uh, immunodeficiency? Yes, so we clinicians like to divide immunodeficiencies into primary immunodeficiencies, also called PIDs, and secondary immunodeficiencies. So primary immunodeficiencies are caused by defects or faulty genes, whereas secondary immunodeficiencies are caused by some environmental external factors, for example, treatments such as chemotherapy or immunosuppressive treatment, radiotherapy, or some infections, for example, HIV infection. Sadly, the most common cause of immunodeficiency worldwide is actually malnutrition. So far, we know over 250 defects or mutations in the immune genes which have been associated with primary immunodeficiencies. These conditions are very rare in one in 25,000 of healthy individuals. Another example of primary immunodeficiency is so-called SCID or severe combined immunodeficiency. This disease affects children who die early in infancy from severe infections if they are not diagnosed. Treatment is in fact bone marrow transplant. I think some older people may remember David or David Vetter, who was an American boy, so-called bubble boy, the film was made about him, who had to live for 12 years in a plastic bubble without pathogens before he received bone marrow transplant for his skid. However, sad thing was that he actually died of a complication of bone marrow transplant, which was a lymphoma. Some immunodeficiencies, secondary immunodeficiencies, are caused by external factors. Can you give us a bit more information about those in particular? Yes. The first example would be chemotherapy or radiotherapy, which patients receive for treatment, for example, of, of some cancers. These treatments target malignant cells, however, they also kill the actively dividing cells of the immune system, and therefore these patients are at risk of acquired immunodeficiency. We cannot not mention here the new biologic therapies, which have actually revolutionized treatment of some conditions, such as lymphoma, rheumatoid arthritis, or Crohn's disease. Could you explain how the HIV, HIV virus actually causes immunodeficiency? There are about 35 million people affected with HIV worldwide. And HIV is a very clever virus because it's actually learned how to target and destroy our own immune system, which is there to protect us from viral infections. So HIV actually infects the immune cells, such as the helper lymphocytes or dendritic cells, and then uses the individual cell genetic machinery to multiply and make new viron, vi virions and then infect other cells. Once T helper lymphocyte is infected by HIV, it is then eliminated by another cell of the immune system called a cytotoxic T lymphocyte. However, in that way, the T helper lymphocytes, which are there to orchestrate the immune system, are actually eliminated by our own uh, immune system. And this leads to profound immunosuppression and, in fact, as you said, is defined as acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS. You say that immunodeficiencies can lead to susceptibility to some infections. Are there particular types of infections that uh, people tend to get? Yes, so we said the immune system is a network and depending which part is missing or malfunctioning, this will lead to a specific uh, infection. So some examples, antibody deficiency uh, will lead to infections with bacteria, in particular encapsulated bacteria such as Haemophilus influenzae or pneumococcus, which are responsible for pneumonias or respiratory tract infections. Deficiencies in complement proteins will 
lead to severe sepsis called, caused sorry, by meningococcus. Other examples include defects in neutrophils, uh, which are unable to produce free radicals. Free radicals, free oxygen radicals are there to kill some bacteria, for example, staphylococcus, which can then cause severe infection of our organs with abscess formation, or also infection by the fungus called aspergillus, which can cause severe pneumonia. Is the risk of developing cancer much higher in, in patients with um, immunodeficiencies? Yes, as we said, the immune system is constantly on guard. Uh, small mutations occur constantly in our cells, but the immune system protects us from these cells becoming cancerous and eliminates them. The main player in protecting us from cancer are natural killer lymphocytes or cytotoxic uh, T lymphocytes in the absence of those or if they are not functioning properly, people with immunodeficiency have increased risk of cancer. We also need to mention that patients with immunodeficiency are particularly at risk of so-called virally driven malignancies, such as, for example, lymphomas, which are associated with the infection with Epstein-Barr virus, or in HIV, we have a cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma, which is actually a cancer of the endothelial cells and the malignant transformation of those cells is caused by herpes virus. But how might someone go about diagnosing someone with immunodeficiency? We are taught in the medical school uh, the acronym SPUR, which stands for S, severe, P, persistent, U, uh, unusual, and R, recurrent infection. The other thing to consider is family history because as we already learned, primary immunodeficiencies are genetic disorders and can be transmitted from parents to offspring. Baseline immune investigations would include blood tests, simple blood tests such as full blood count, lymphocyte subsets, complement levels, and antibody levels are baseline investigations. In the immunology clinic, we can perform other tests where we can look for the presence of particular immune proteins, immune cells, or their function. Um, how has the therapy progressed and um, how are immunodeficiencies treated? Starting from simple therapies, uh, some patients uh, require prophylactic antibiotics and that this will protect them from recurrent infections. Patients with antibody deficiency will require these antibodies actually given to them at the regular interval and these patients receive immunoglobulin replacement therapy either intravenously or subcutaneously as an infusion at regular intervals. Patients, children with severe combined immunodeficiency, as I mentioned before, require bone marrow transplant to survive. If, the, if, if we find a matched HLA match donor, those who cannot, for whom we cannot find a donor, some of them can be treated with gene therapy, which is available for some forms of severe combined immunodeficiency. So what does the future hold for uh, immunodeficiency, um, people with immunodeficiency and research? So I think the future is actually going to be fascinating because with new technologies being available, we learn more and more about how the immune system actually works. With these new technologies, we hope to be able to identify and diagnose patients earlier before and organ damage can occur because of recurrent infections. Also, we are now able to screen children or we, are, we also offer screening antenatally and postnatally for those children whose siblings suffer, of, suffer from primary immunodeficiency and we can therefore diagnose them earlier. Finally, we hope that young people will want to take on the research in the field of immunology and immunodeficiencies and this will eventually lead to the improvement in patients' outcomes and patients' lives. Thank you.